There's strong evidence now that the Trump trade war is hitting China's economy, and that's raising the stakes and the standoff between the superpowers. Growth in the last quarter was China's slowest in three decades. President Trump is taking the credit. He tweeted, tariffs are having a major effect on companies wanting to leave China for non-tariffed countries. Thousands of companies are leaving. This is why China wants to make a deal with us. China is stimulating its economy, extra government spending, tax cuts to cushion the slowdown, and shifting the reserve requirements for banks. And Beijing insists the present pace of growth is sustainable. We have put more energy into restructuring, transition, and upgrading without deliberately relaxing the policies for the sake of maintaining a certain speed. The current economic growth speed is, therefore, solid, high in quality, and sustainable. Patrick Schoenack is the chief strategist at Silvercrest Asset Management. Joins me now. Patrick, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Um, the, so, how, how much... I mean, really, what we need to know is how much is the trade tariffs actually taking a, a toll here? How much of this number, assuming we believe it even to be moderately, moderately accurate, is because of the trade tariff? It's convenient for politicians, both in the U.S. and China, to blame tariffs for this, or the trade war. Uh, it's convenient for the White House to say that they're gaining leverage on China. It's convenient for the Chinese to say, look, this isn't our problem. This is something that the United States is doing to us. But really, um, Chinese exports overall, globally, are down about 1% year on year. That, you know, that's a dent to the economy. It doesn't help. But really, China's slowdown comes from much deeper issues in the Chinese economy, um, over-reliance on credit expansion, over-investment, and then bad debt that's resulted from it that's weighing like an anchor on China's economy. And what that means is that not only is the trade war not really to blame for China's slowdown, but uh, it, a trade deal won't solve China's slowdown. All right. The, the wider economic issues... As you've just said, if we look underneath the numbers, though, there are some, re there are some reasons for encouragement. Uh, more consumer demand, more domestic-led demand now in China, coupled with more stimulus. But you're not buying it. It is hard to know what to make of China's numbers. You know, increasingly, people who watch China closely take the headline number, the GDP number, with a grain of salt, simply because it just doesn't vary from from quarter to quarter, like a normal economy does. It's way too smooth. Um, and then if you look at other economies that usually are bellwethers for China, South Korea, um, it, actually, its GDP shrank in the first quarter. Singapore's, it shrank by 3%. Um, China's own uh, imports shrank by nearly 8% year on year. All of those seem to indicate actually um, shrinking demand within China. So it, it's really, you know, I, I know what the official numbers say, uh, that there was buoyant but, domestic demand in China, but it's, it's, it's hard to reconcile that with the bigger picture. So take, take that, and then if things are worse than expected, what is the Chinese capacity or appetite to withstand uh, these uh, trade tariffs? Bearing in mind that President Xi may not have to face an election, but he does have restive regional governors and he does have a rural, um, a rural populace that can cause him trouble. So the hope in D.C. is that by you know, weakening the Chinese economy, that it will force them to come to the table and <clears throat> essentially open up and do the things that they themselves have said they need to do. Uh, but the indication really seems to be that, that under Xi, they've gone on lockdown, that they're trying to insulate the Chinese economy from external trade pressure, and that means essentially stopping reforms, the kind of reforms that, while they're necessary to get China's growth back on track, could also prove risky and potentially introduce some instability. So it actually, in some ways, unless there's a breakthrough, it pushes China in the opposite direction that we want them to go in. Finally, all right, but then, again, this idea... You, uh, we can re I suppose I'm taking it down to its most simplistic level, which is the President of the United States saying, our tariffs are hurting and they will force you to come back to a deal, and others saying, no, China has enormous capacity for pain and if they, if they don't want to do a deal, they won't do a deal regardless of the economic outcome. 
Who's going to win in those event that eventuality? Uh, you know, I think China would like a deal, but uh, and they like the president to get off their back. But I don't think they're willing to give up, you know, as much as he wants them to. And uh, and they seem to be digging in. That seems to be the rhetoric. And you know, there are a lot of things that that they could do, um, including devaluing the currency, which they've proven reluctant to do, that would kind of slap the United States back in a hard way. So I think it's dangerous for the for policymakers in the U.S. to sort of be cheering the slowdown of China's economy, an uncontrolled slowdown. China's economy needs to slow and it needs to change gears. But an uncontrolled slowdown could hit the United States in a lot of a lot of ways, including, for instance, um, slower Chinese demand for oil, for energy, uh, could undercut the oil price. It could turn around and, and undercut uh, uh, the very highly leveraged shale industry in the United States uh, and, and, and hit them hard like that's what happened in 2015. So there are a lot of ways that this can rebound against right. the United States.